4.15 exercise. For this exercise, it is very important to feed, read the first line of information where it tells you that the business uses a markup of 50% on cost. You will need to use this to calculate the cost of sales every time that a sale is made. Number 1. Merchandise purchased by cheque, 25,000 Rand. The two accounts involved are bank and trading stock. Both of these are assets, so your assets will have plus 25,000 as trading stock increases and minus 25,000 as bank decreases. Number two, goods are sold for cash, 30,000. We can use this information immediately to show how bank an asset increases by 30,000 and equity increases by 30,000 as well because of the sales income. However, we now also need to consider the cost price. Note that this has not been given to you nor have you been reminded of it in the question. It is expected that you will be able to figure this out for yourself and take it into account. If the markup is 50%, it means that the formula you need to use is selling price divided by 100 plus 50% or 150%. If we use the 30,000 as sales and we divide by 150% or 1,5, you will see that the cost price should be 20,000 Rand. We can use this then to affect our trading stock and our cost of sales. In assets, we will show minus 20,000 for trading stock decreases as we no longer have the stock that we just sold. Equity at the same time will also decrease by 20,000 as we now account for the cost of sales expense. Number three, cash sales, 1,200 Rand. We are going to treat this in exactly the same way as number two, except that the amounts are different. We will first consider the selling price of 1,200 Rand. In assets, plus 1,200 as bank increases, and in owner's equity, plus 1,200 for sales income. To calculate the cost of sales, you will take 1,200 divided by 150% or divided by 1,5. This will give you a cost price of 800 Rand. In assets, we will show minus 800 for trading stock decreases and in owner's equity, minus 800 for cost of sales expense. Now that you have mastered the ideas of selling goods to your customers rather than simply offering a service, we can also look at the idea of credit trading. Sometimes a customer may, may not have the money to pay immediately and in this case you may decide to grant credit to them. In other words, allow them to buy the goods now and pay for them at a later date. A customer who borrows money from you in this way is known as a debtor. In exactly the same way, if you for some reason do not have money to buy stock, you could negotiate terms with your supplier. Your supplier would then be your creditor if you owe them money. Let's have a look at how these fit into the accounting equation. A debtor owes money to you. In the same way as if you have money in the bank, money is owed to you by the bank, the debtor also owes the money to you and you can claim it back from them. Hopefully now you can see that debtors would also be considered assets, just like bank. In addition, just like bank, they are considered current assets, for the simple reason that you would certainly hope that your debtors would pay you within a year. Your creditors are obviously liabilities, as money is owed to your suppliers. In the same way that debtors are current assets, we will show creditors as current liabilities. Again, we certainly hope that we would pay our creditors within a year. Let's have a look at example 4.16. Number one, bought stock on credit from Best Buys, 7,000 Rand. As before, if we've bought stock, 
our assets will increase by 7,000 Rand as trading stock increases. However, in this case, instead of reducing bank, we are going to increase our liabilities account. No cash has changed hands, so instead, our liabilities will increase by 7,000 Rand as we owe our creditors more. We will simply show our creditors account as the other account involved, rather than bank. Number two, goods sold to N. Morgan for 1,800 Rand. Since we are not told that N. Morgan has paid us, we must assume that these goods have been bought on credit. When recording this, the only difference between a credit sale and a cash sale is that we use debtors instead of bank. Both of these are asset accounts, so in this case in assets we will still show plus 1800, however our reason is different. We show that debtors owe us more money instead of bank being changed. Our equity is treated the same as before, with a plus 1800 for sales income. Even though no cash has changed hands, we have still earned this money, and the debtors owe it to us. We now need to consider the cost of these goods. The amount is given here as 900 Rand. Out of interest, can you calculate the markup on this sale? The markup used was 100%. We're going to record the transfer out of trading stock into cost of sales in exactly the same way as we did for a cash sale. There is no difference here. Trading stock has still left the business, so assets will be minus 900 for trading stock decreases. And our equity also needs to decrease by 900, as we need to account for the cost of sales expense of 900 Rand. Number 3. N. Morgan paid 500 Rand on account. This is a new concept to you. You might think, what on earth does this mean? Remember that N. Morgan bought goods on credit. In other words, N. Morgan must have an account with us, as they are a debtor. If he then paid 500 Rand on account, it means that the debtor is paying us back part of the amount that is owed. In this case, one asset is simply being converted into another. In assets, we will show plus 500 as bank increases, we have received this money, and at the same time, minus 500 as debtors owe us less. The fact that there are two entries on the assets side and nothing in equity or liabilities is not a concern, as the cohesion still balances. Plus 500 minus 500 does equal naught. Number four, paid best buys the amount owed. For this transaction, you will need to go and have a look at how much was owed to best buys. In number one, we bought stock for 7,000 Rand, so this is the amount that must be settled. Our asset is decreasing, as bank is getting smaller, so we will show minus 7,000 bank decreases. But why has bank decreased? Although we have not received any stock in this case, nor any other asset, we have decreased the liability or decreased the amount owed to best buys as we no longer owe them anything. Our liabilities then can be shown as minus 7,000 as we owe creditors less. You can now try 4.17 exercise.